And boom, voila! What is up guys, welcome. Guillaume here for Pure Programming. Today, I'm starting a new project, a very simple image processing software. I want to be able to display an image, resize an image, and work on a bunch of images at once. Let's say you have a folder full of pictures and you want to change their size, or you want to create thumbnails from them. That's the kind of features I want to put in my application. Everything you need is in the description box below. Let's get started. All right, here we are. So you have just your pure basic open. Uh, I said I want an image displaying uh, software. So what we need is a window. Okay, so we are going to first create a window. So for that, you have the open window command. At the bottom of the screen here in the status bar, you see all the parameters. Window ID, X, Y coordinates, inner width, inner height, title, and some optional parameters in uh, brackets here. So let's start with the window ID. I can choose whatever I want, so I'm going to put zero because that's the first number. Okay, X and Y, well, I'll put as well zero and zero. Uh, remember X as a zero zero, the origin is at the top left of the screen and the, the X's goes left to right and the Y's goes top to bottom. So zero zero is right over there. Then the size, okay, width. So I will put a 640 by 480. Okay, then the title, simple image processor all right and that's it okay so let's test that you hit f5 key and it runs okay um, here you can see that executable started and then the program execution has finished and we briefly saw a window right look again see we see I don't know if it shows up in the video but on my screen I can see quickly a window showing up and then closing uh, down and that's because when the program executes it runs this line the first line open window and then at the next at the end of this line the program ends and so when the program ends the window closes um, so we need to find a way there is a way to to uh, to tell the program not to stop but to wait. The way to go is to create an infinite loop with a keywords called repeat until. So you write repeat. Here you're supposed to type stuff, commands, the commands that you want to repeat. And after that you tap until. What we want is that the window when we click on the you know the cross here, uh, we want we want it to close or we want to have this menu like this. So repeat until. So we want to wait for an event to come from the window. For example, the close action from the system menu or the cross here, or even the shortcut here. You see Alt F4 will close. Uh, it's a Windows, uh, I'm working on Windows 10 here. So it's a Windows shortcut. Repeat until, so we need to call repeat until wait window event so we call this command or we can do something at least less uh, complicated okay we're going to do repeat what do we repeat we repeat a call to wait window event okay and we are going to name a variable here uh, let's say I like to give long name to my variables window event equals wait uh, window event so a variable is just uh, a placeholder when you want where you want to put the result of this command so this command will return wait window event waits until an event has occurs on any of the open windows okay and it returns if you hit the F1 key, you get the help on that, and you see that it returns an event. 
return the event which occurred. See window event for more information. Okay, window event. We have a lot of events. And we have the PB event close window. Okay. So let's go back. I'm going to do an infinite loop, repeat. In this loop, I will wait for window event to happen. For example, the close. I will put that event in this variable that I don't need to declare, okay? Just writing this will declare the variable and put the result of the command into it. And I'm waiting until, until I get a close event, okay? So until the window event, this guy, oh, it's the same name as an existing, equals um, this guy, absolutely not. The PB, pound sign, PB, event, close window, right? Okay, so we're opening a window and then we repeat infinitely, not infinitely, we repeat the same call to wait window event, we wait for events, and as soon as there is an event, if the event is a close event, then we stop the loop, so we stop the program. Now let's start that. Exactly, simple image processor. The window has open, I can move it, see? I have this system menu here, I got the Alt F4, I got the cross here to close the window, so let's try that. Boom, that works. Once again, now with the Alt F4 shortcut, boom, once again, I like to test every step from the shortcut here, that works. Okay, so the three, the cross or the Alt F4 or the system menu, basically they, they raise the same event, it's the close window event. So we have our image, uh, sorry. We have our window, uh, good for us, okay? So, uh, now that we have the window, we need to display an image in this window. <clears throat> to do so, you need to add gadgets. Uh, I know from the help that there is this image gadget command that will create an image gadget. Image gadget, status bar, help, gadget ID, X, Y, width, height, image ID, and flags. Okay. So, um, ID, gadget ID. That's the first gadget of my window, so I will put zero. Then X and Y. Okay, I will put it, so it's the coordinates within the window, okay? If I hit Ctrl B and make that line a command and run it again, okay, when we're talking about coordinates for, for uh, gadgets, it's within the drawing area of the window. See, the 0, 0 is right here. If I move my window, the 0, 0 is here again, okay? Here you get six, 639 uh, X and 0 Y, and here you'll get, uh, here you'll get 0x and 479 because it goes from the height is 480 so it goes from 0 to 479 the width is 640 so it goes from 0 to 639 and so these coordinates here is 639 479 so i want my image gadget to take the whole space of my inner window okay so coordinates will be 0 0 let's remove the command by hitting the Control Shift B shortcut, width and height. So once again, same. All right. Uh, image ID. Hmm, that I don't know because I don't have any image. Let's check the help. Image ID. The image to display. Use image ID. Okay. If this parameter is zero, then no image will be displayed. We use this. All right. Okay, image ID zero and flags, I won't put any, they are optional. All right, let's try this. Hmm, I don't see any difference. Of course, we don't have any window uh, image loaded. 
Um, so let's put a simple flag here. And this flag will be PB image border, just to, to draw a border to our image gadget. And if we run this, you'll see that there is some sunken border, you know, sunken area all the way from 00 to 640, 480 here. So my image gadget is here actually, but displaying absolutely no image. All right. Now, next step, we want to display an image, of course. Yes, so I have a very nice flowery blue image here in my folder. So I'm gonna take the path of this, all right? And what I want to do is load an image by calling the command, very simple, load image, right? Uh, load image down in the status bar image ID it's the first image I'm loading it's going to be zero again file name so that's a string you know a string is between double quotes I put the whole path of my image and I add another backslash and the name of my image it's a flower dot jpeg image any flags no, no optional flags. All right. Okay. Uh, I have an image. Now what I can do is in my image gadget, I can put my image instead of zero here. I can put my image. But if I look here to the parameter image ID, you need to use the image ID function to get the ID from an image. It's a little bit technical, but it will get you the handle, the actual Windows handle, whatever. It's You need to call, instead of putting zero here, this won't work because we already know that zero is actually telling the image gadget to display no image. But here, our image ID here is zero. So uh, if I run this, Exactly, I get no image just like before. Even if I have loaded this image within the uh, somewhere in memory in the image reference as ID zero. But to tell the image gadget, I need to call here image ID. Okay, image ID of zero. That's how you tell that's the image ID and the zero here matches the zero there. But this whole command here with the zero tells, gives us, gives back, returns the actual real ID of the image within the memory. Okay, let's try this. Hmm, doesn't work. Okay, let's check the errors. All right, line four, image gadget, blah blah blah. Okay, error. The specified image let's call it image id is not initialized but i've initialized it right here okay so let's stop the program here kill program okay then there is this error mark here that i'm not a fan of it it say the error is here but i know already it's here so let's remove it so debugger error log clear error marks and I already created a shortcut I did that earlier Control shift C for me to remove the error marks if you want to add new shortcuts you can go in file preferences and then you have the shortcuts and then you can put whatever shortcuts you want so debugger clear error marks I already said Control shift C you can change the shortcuts uh, as you want Okay, so the image is not initialized. Let's try to look at load image, the help. Okay, 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 okay. Ha, huh, look at that. The image can be in BMP or icon, only for Windows, or any format supported by the image plugin library. Hmm. To use uh, the following functions can be used to enable automatically more image formats 
image decoder, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, TGA, GIF, etc. Ah, so by default, we only can load uh, the BMP files and ICO files, but not the JPEG files. So we need to use the JPEG image decoder function or command to tell our program that it can load um, JPEG images. So let's go back to our code. I can just maybe copy paste this. It's going to be faster. And right before, let's say, right before everything, at the first command, I want to say, okay, my program will be able to use JPEG images. The flower JPEG is, the flower image is a JPEG. That now should work. Let's try that. And boom, voila, we have our first example. We are able to load an image in our program within this very nice window. So that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.